back our dear viewers as we have promised at the beginning of the show that today we are going to talk about an important topic which is the funding for the museums in Egypt. How do we get the proper funding for the museums? Uh, that would be our topic for discussion for today with our dear guest in the studio, Ms. Femini Haukesha. She is a tour guide. Hello, Ms. Femini. Hello. Uh, Ms. Femini, uh, first of all, we need to know how does the Egyptian Museum get this kind of funding and who is the source of uh, these fundings? Well, Egyptian museums here get funding mostly it's government uh, funding. Uh, that is the actually main problem because we need to source different ways of uh, funding. Uh, also like the Grand Egyptian Museum, it's a loan that's given from the JICA from Japan, uh, long-term uh, loans. Uh, we get also, we have exchange of debt programs, like Egypt is uh, indebted for, uh, debt, has debts for like Italy, and they, uh, they waive these uh, debts and they give, instead of it, they give uh, money for the, some museums uh, in Egypt. However, most of the museums uh, that gets funding here in Egypt are the museums that are governed by the Ministry of Antiquity, mm. uh, which is around 60 museums. Uh, but we have in Egypt hundred, more than 130 mm -hmm. museums in Egypt that are all governed by different authorities, mm -hmm. like uh, museums that follow the um, uh, Ministry of uh, Culture, mm -hmm. uh, Ministry of uh, Agriculture, um, the, well, several, like private also, we have several private museums, and most of them, they don't get funding. So these museums, uh, Ms. Femini, do get the funding from uh, the... the place that they belong to yes. so you you you, yes. you were saying that some museums be, uh, do belong to the ministry of uh, agriculture so it gets its funding from the that ministry. source or from the ministry of endowment or, or whatsoever yes are we uh, having a um, criteria here or a mechanism in order to get the proper funding no. or some of these museums are actually neglected because yes. of the funding issue that, that is actually the main problem here in egypt that there is uh, lack of uh, funding uh, mm -hmm. to these to all these museums we have and that's why they don't provide actually or they don't play their pivotal role in actually yeah. educating the society and having a great influence on the coming generations mm -hmm. because if there is enough awareness to the general public to the real and important role of museums this will actually mm -hmm. uh, we will have a better uh, educated society Mm. And that's the problem. We don't have uh, enough funding that makes the activities that allows actually the museums to have better programs and better activities to the general public. Mm. Most, and actually this is also uh, most of the governing authorities here and the general public, they view the museums as a place, uh, warehouses, mm. and it's a place only for the tourist and the cultured mm. elite. While actually the museums, uh, if they have, a, they play their role, the, it will raise the awareness of the public to actually get interested in the museums, uh, whether by and vi visiting the museums or volunteering or even donating to the museums. Mm. Uh, the fact of donating to the museums, yes. don't you think that the people are having here somehow a role in order to provide funding uh, as well for um, uh, the museums? So if we, we are talking, for example, about the Grand Egyptian Museum, yes as an example. Don't we uh, have a mechanism here in order to um, collect funding from the people in order to continue the construction and uh, the work on uh, the Grand Egyptian well, Museum? Well, that is actually that's what should happen, mm -hmm. but we lack uh, proper uh, law regulations that allows uh, proper funding. Why? Uh, uh, well, that's, there is no vision actually, that's the main problem, that there is no vision uh, part of the vision is having a good strategy for uh, the museums and part of this vision is having a good strategy for funding and uh, when you have a good strategy for funding you will actually uh, allow the public to get involved uh, I did a survey in my thesis and in this survey I actually was for individuals and for corporates 
And the interesting thing is that most of the people here, we donate. People don in Egypt, they donate. Indeed. But mm. they no donate to uh, social programs. Mm. Uh, nobody, or actually very rarely, that people donate to cultural problems. And almost none of the individuals that I targeted, uh, none of them uh, donated to museums. Mm. While the corporates, uh, some of them, they donated to museums, but museums abroad. Especially abroad. multi, yes, that's multinational companies. So multinational companies do donate to museums abroad, but companies... Egypt, uh, 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 multinational companies working in Egypt. Working in Egypt. They, of course, as part of their international yeah. corporates, they donate to museums abroad. Mrs. However... Semini, this is maybe that I want to ask you as a tour leader. Um, of course, we have a very important archaeological sites in Egypt, yes. apart from the museums, of course. We have uh, important monuments, uh, for example, like the royal family, uh, palaces yes. and it is subject to negligence so these are considered a source of money not only for the government but for the country True. why the government or the Ministry of Antiquities is not um, taking care of these uh, important archaeological sites and, and monuments uh, in Egypt well they are there is around 45 palaces and um, there is around 20 of them that needs restoration mm -hmm. uh, and they need between 10 million mm -hmm. and 150 million Egyptian pounds for restorations. Again, we come back to the point of funding. So we need to source not only donors here in Egypt, but we need to source uh, donors abroad. But and we, we receive lack the funding mechanism. from abroad. Sorry? Yeah. We receive fundings and loans from abroad. But we lack the mechanism to look for funding. The, do the funding we get from abroad is that actually they seek us, but we don't seek the funders, and that there's a big difference. Mm -hmm. So we need to build good relationships with organizations and uh, with people that can donate abroad in order, we need to look for them, mm -hmm. not that they come like governments uh, from Italy or the UNESCO, yes. they come and seek and they give us funds for our projects here. But mm -hmm. we need to make the effort from us we to need to have the mechanism them. to mm. approach them. Since you have been working on that uh, topic, uh, Ms. Femini, uh, what could be the mechanism here that we should be following in order to start to attract fundings, not only from Egypt, but also from abroad? The first of all is that we need to have a vision uh, and uh, to build a good strategy for uh, funding. We have good assets in our museums and we need to brand our museums. Uh, we need to have good management. Uh, and we need to have good marketing skills. Mm -hmm. So we need to market our uh, heritage. We need to market mm -hmm. uh, our museums. Mm -hmm. I mean, the heritage, Egypt is a, a very important and it plays a, it's a key role in heritage in Egypt. Mm -hmm. But the museums, there is a lot of ignorance to Why? the museums we because, have. Because uh, we, uh, we are having about uh, two-thirds of the uh, artifacts in the world. And uh, we are so rich in, in different uh, cultures, not only in um, uh, Pharaonic, uh, Islamic, uh, Coptic, different cultures. But still, we do not have the proper funding or the proper display also of our artifacts. Yes. How can we solve that issue in order to attract the tourists? Because people abroad, most of the people are aware of the importance of Egypt and what we do really have on the ground here, but still, we are not marketing enough for uh, what that's we true. do have. We need, that's what I mentioned, that we need to build good relationship with the donors. Uh, How can we do that? We need to approach. We need mm. to have the mechanism. You need to ha build uh, good qualified staff. We lack also mm. the good qualified uh, staff that mm. can work on this. So we need to seek experienced uh, staff and experienced people in fundraising mm. so that we can learn here as the governing authorities, they need to know how to approach these people. We need to change the laws also to allow uh, funding and for so that the, the donors know where their money is going. Mm. The procedures also here in Egypt for if you get a donation to a museum, they are very long and very obstinate. And it wastes the time of the donor and the, mm. the receiving end of the museum itself. The museum manager also here in Egypt, mm. uh, they don't have a uh, big authority uh, in really sourcing uh, donors. So I've heard stories from uh, museum managers who are friends of mine that if they find 
actually a donor. It has to go through the ministry and it takes such a long time. It can take up to a year mm -hmm. until they receive the money from the donor. So these are all very long procedure and it wastes the time and effort Indeed. of everybody. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Femini, um, as a true leader, apart from the funding and the problems that uh, we are facing regarding this issue, what are the most important sites uh, that is really well taken care of by the government and they are really important to, for tourists to come and visit? Well, the, for instance, if you're talking about the palaces, the, pal the Manual Palace of uh, Prince Muhammad Ali, it's uh, very taken uh, care of. Uh, it has very good management. They're actually doing a lot of activities in uh, this palace. Uh, they've also just recently opened the Hunting Museum, which was closed for uh, 10 years. Uh, they had very little uh, fund to uh, really do a, a magnificent uh, exhibiting. Uh, so there are a lot of places. There is also the Child Museum uh, that is in Heliopolis. It's a brilliant uh, and up to the international standard museum. So there is some museums that's really been taken care of. Uh, there has also uh, the Aviation Museum uh, that has been opened, I think, last year. Uh, so there is some effort, of course, going on. Yes. And I think the Minister of uh, Antiquity, Mr. Khaled Anani, has also uh, had intention to open small museums in all the airports in Egypt, like mm. particularly Sharm el Sheikh and Hergada I and the Cairo Museum. I think it's a quite interesting idea. Yes, it's a very interesting idea because the tourists will just, you know, have a glance and have a look at and small to be, museums. To look forward to, to, visit, forward to uh, visit these uh, museums. Mm -hmm. uh, I do believe that, unfortunately, we are not having the proper awareness That's true. of the museums that we do have in our country. And I, I, I do believe also that we are not doing the proper marketing for these museums abroad. So how can we do that, not only for funding, but to attract the tourists to visit these museums? Well, of course, it's the political situation that is affecting a lot of and the instability uh, at the moment. but. Um, I think we need to also attract the locals to Indeed. our museums. You have been mentioning uh, the yes. Child Museum in Heliopolis. Yes, but How many people do visit uh, these museums? And I do believe here, and correct me if I'm wrong, that the schools and the, the, the universities should uh, do regular visits to these museums in order to increase the awareness of the children and well, the Well, the youth. Child Museum in particular, they, have a, they do play a, a big part and they have lots of activities uh, not only to like schools and museums but orphanages and uh, you know uh, disadvantaged people mm. to try and attract them and particularly children yeah. uh, from unprivileged areas to attract them to and uh, invite them to visit the museum uh, but uh, there is also other museums like uh, or let me talk about the house for instance uh, Beit El Kiritleya or Gay Anderson Museum as it's uh, mm. mostly uh, known uh, they also do a lot of activities with the people in the surrounding area. Mm. The Civilization Museum, which is about to uh, open, I think, tomorrow, hopefully, or part of it is going to open. Uh, they also, in the area, uh, surrounding area, they should do a lot of activities and programs to attract the locals to mm. visit. Because every visitor, actually, is a potential Indeed. donor. So. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Femini, there, there was a tendency from the government, uh, uh, the Ministry of Antiquities in particular, uh, as a kind of funding for the, the museum or the most important monuments in Egypt, they open these uh, places for certain occasions like uh, weddings, mm -hmm. uh, like uh, uh, meetings. So how do you see such... Uh, uh, I don't know what, what to call it. I think it. this is part of the activities of... Uh, but but I'm talking about the importance of the place and, and how it could be um, well reser uh, reserved. And I think in some places you can do this in, in some museums. Uh, the Metropolitan Museum, for instance, in, uh, in the States, mm -hmm. and the uh, Louvre and the uh, British Museum and uh, Victoria and Albert, they all do uh, like galas and dinners in the museum mm -hmm. as part of attracting uh, people and have, to have special occasion mm -hmm. with certain fees. And this is how they generate income. 
So you need to use your assets well, but of course under certain regulations that can protect uh, the monuments. Mm -hmm. So we need, that's what I meant by having proper legislations and laws to actually uh, properly invest our assets mm -hmm. in the best possible ways. Mm -hmm. So you can actually do uh, parties and wedding parties mm -hmm. and you can do gala dinners uh, but take a certain procedures in order to certain procedures for the safety in of the certain place. areas. Mm. The Maniac Palace Museum is actually doing this yes. in their gardens, mm. Mm -hmm. and it's uh, they are really um, having very good uh, income mm. from all these um, events. programs and events. Mm -hmm. So it's a fantastic way to really properly use your your assets. Mm -hmm. And many museums, like the Agriculture Museum, it has beautiful gardens. Mm -hmm. So it can be properly utilized, really, if you have the vision and you have good management and good marketing skills. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, in most of the museums in Egypt, it is not properly used. Mm -hmm. So we need to look at museums as an economic engine that can really generate income to the country, even locally, not even only internationally. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Yeah. Uh, Ms. Fellini, we, we have to mention here uh, the steps that should be taken. How can we try to think out of the box in order to attract the tourists to come back to uh, visit Egypt as tourism has started to uh, return um, somehow to the country? How can we start to attract these tourists to come back to Egypt? Well, we need to give good services. Uh, first of all, uh, if we have, if we provide good services, and uh, I think one of the biggest, for instance, problems that the area uh, of the pyramid area in, yeah. uh, in Egypt, most of the tourists who go there, they suffer from the people trying to, you still know, till now, Ms. till now, unfortunately, mm -hmm. it is the most visited area in Egypt, and it's the most important area. Yet, most of the tourists they get harassed there. So I think we need to really have proper um, implementation of uh, laws to actually protect the tourists and let them have a, a good experience in visiting the most important monument in Egypt. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Um, most of the countries um, around the world, um, they don't have the treasure that we have here in Egypt. That's true. We have um, most of the, of the monuments um, we have the Islamic monuments, we have the Pharaonic monuments, most important monuments we have in Egypt, but still we don't know how to make use of this. On the other part, we find um, a country like uh, the United Arab Emirates, they don't have history like we do, but they have tourism, that which is double the number that we have. So how's, how come? Well, because they, like I said, they provide good service, good quality service to their sites. Uh, I think we, Egypt also, one of the things that we really could do is branching our museums. Like the Louvre is branching mm -hmm. in Abu, Abu Dhabi. Uh, you have the Hermitage that's been branched in Amsterdam. A uh, lot of museums are branching their museums abroad and building like you know, uh, branches for them in different countries. Mm -hmm. So why don't we also branch our museums abroad? This will also generate income to the country, but it will also promote our uh, culture and our heritage and will encourage people to visit Egypt. Mm -hmm. So that's another way also of thinking out of the box. Mm -hmm. So it's a problem of propaganda. Marketing. I don't think a propaganda is a problem of marketing mm -hmm. uh, because everybody I mean, is aware of the Egyptian culture and the ancient Egyptian, the pyramids. and. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's a dream uh, of everybody to come and visit Egypt. Yes, yes. Uh, Ms. Fellini, thank you very much uh, for your precious input. And I'm afraid now that um, we have to uh, end our segment here. We go now live to the Arab League headquarters where uh, Lebanese President Michel Aoun is to address the permanent representatives of uh, the pan-Arab body. <laughs>